Ali, could you make a video where you kind of detail your typical training for a week? I know you've referred to it generally a few times, but details would be nice. That's a good question. 1,500 calorie data right here. 1,500 calories. This is about 20, 23 large bedroom days. It's about 1,500 calories. Just a bit of water. Mm. Sugar. So, typical training a week. I'll keep a training diary, yeah? So here we have my training since January 2000. So if you ask me what, how many kilometers I cycled in, in August 2000, it's 1,090. In, in uh, August 2003, it was 3,605. And if you ask me how many kilometers I did on the bicycle in March 2007, it was zero. I did zero kilometers in March 2007. And then in September 2007, I rode 395 kilometers. And in February this year, I did 405 kilometers. So 100 k's a week. So I can do 515 k's in a day. So I did 405 just, just gone in February, so hardly anything. And running-wise, I've kept a running journal since 2008. And in January 2008, I ran zero kilometers. In May 2009, I ran seven kilometers. Seven, seven, not 70, seven kilometers. And the biggest month I ever did was October 2011. I did 198 kilometers. That's 50 kilometers a week. That's a lot of running for me. But for other people, they do 200 kilometers in a week. I know Mike Arnstein can do 200 kilometers in a day. <laughs> so what Mike Arnstein does, can it do in a day, takes me a whole month and uh, December 2008 I ran 30 kilometers and last month in 2012 in March I ran 84 kilometers so there we go I can objectively say I trained fuck all <laughs> but the secret is with, is with diet and sleep I get a lot of sleep so that's where you uh, get the benefits there so last year I averaged about 233 kilometers a week and running was about 20 21, 22 kilometers per week. So that's really, that's really jack all. I mean, for someone who's my fitness level and my body weight, like I've got the, I've got the body mass index of a Tour de France rider in peak condition. That's my body mass index all year long. Because of my diet, because of my lifestyle, because of my training, I don't eat the high fat, greasy animal product foods. I don't eat animal products full, full stop. I've been vegan since April 2001, that's 11 years vegan, high carb, low fat. So when you do that, your body mass index, just, you become like a lean Tour de France rider, especially if you do a little bit of cycling, not too much. I don't race, I mean I've raced, when's the last time I had a bike race? I haven't raced this year, I don't think I've raced this year. The last bike race I did was June last year in 2011, so it's at six. So I haven't raced my bike for nine months, officially. I haven't officially done a race for nine months. Pretty sure it's been nine months. Wow. <laughs> so, but I'm in Tour de France condition all year long in terms of body mass index, in terms of composition. So how does that work? Well, it works by high carb, low fat, vegan, long term, early nights. And I don't take any coffee. I haven't drunk a cup of coffee since October 1999. I don't need stimulants to function, and I don't starve myself. I eat, as we can see here, this 1,500 calorie snack here. This is a snack, a meal, you know. This whole data raid, just dates and water, nothing else, has got less than a one gram of fat. This has got less than a gram of fat. So when you don't eat the fat, you can't store the fat. You can't turn excess carbs into fat. It's just impossible. If it was true, I'd be fat. And last time I checked, I wasn't fat. So if you eat less fat, you're going to store less fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. So I encourage high calorie, high calorie, high carb, low fat, vegan. With fruit being the focus. Because fruit doesn't have all the added salt that can cause the fluid retention that people mistake as fat. So if you store, you can store 20 pounds of salt retention, fluid retention, if you don't train it out, if you don't pump it out from your lymphatic system. So then you go, oh, I'm, I'm getting fat from eating carbohydrates, but no, no, no. You're getting fat from all the fucking salt you add to your rice and pasta, and that's just storing as fluid retention. 
Because if we look to nature, the body's, the body's requirement for sodium is very, very low, maybe 500 milligrams a day. So a lot of people are eating 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 milligrams of salt a day, and if they have a bit of time off, they start to pop, 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 pop. They're not getting fat, but they're getting salty. They're getting puffy. It looks the same as fat. It feels the same as fat. And people go, I'm getting fat, I'm getting fat. It's like, no, you're getting puffed up. You're getting edema. So that's the training I do. I do fuck all training. I'd like to do a running race whenever there's one there because it's a good example. I win most of the, most of the running races I do, I win them because the level of fitness in society is so fucking low that it's not hard to win a running race. And if I don't win, I, I at least get top 10 in 99% of the running races I do. So I like to do running races because it's a good example to show the vegan lifestyle and be a bit of a crusader. And I like to use my bicycle for transport and exploring new places, getting some adventure, meeting new people. But you'll never ever see me exercising. I haven't exercised for years. I won't never exercise again. Exercise fucking sucks. Exercise is boring. I can't exercise. So I don't promote exercise, but I do promote adventure, I do promote increasing your fitness, I do promote challenging yourself against your friends, your foes, whoever, against the clock, I do promote that, I do promote self-exploration by bodily activity, by bodily movement, the body's a machine, you have to use it, you have to move it, so that's my details of my training, is I ride my bike to the shop and I try and do a running race whenever there's one around, I'll go and do a running race, so that's it, that's, that's basically my training, I ride my bike to the shop, I like to ride my bike up new roads. I like to run new places, and that's it. And it averages up about 233 kilometers a week of the year. Running is about 21, 22 k's a week. So that that's a that is objective as I can give you. I don't follow a program. I just make sure I get lots of sleep. I just make sure I eat a lot. So I, I try and make sure I focus on eating more than training. I always make sure I eat more because for me. Most of my training is actually eating and sleeping. Eating and sleeping should be your, most of your training. You should spend more time eating and sleeping than training. You should spend like 10 times, literally 10 times more time eating and sleeping than training itself. Training should only take up maybe half an hour of your day, or an, an hour maybe if you're commuting your bike to work and stuff. More than that, you're doing a bit too much unless you're a professional athlete with no responsibility for me. I've got responsibilities, sort of, so I don't like to commit too much time to uh, activity. Just enough to stay healthy and stay fit, but not too much. So that's it. There you go. Easy. Easy. Just get live the adventure lifestyle. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe this video if you want to see more. Post your comments and questions down below. See you soon.